You can just picture Vince McMahon thinking something like this as a rallying cry for everybody out there, can't you? As you sit there in your self-quarantine, jamming out to Billy Ray Cyrus. Doesn't matter, show must go on! We need mania to hell with coronavirus! He's probably thinking about booking himself in a two-on-one handicap match. Coronavirus and God versus him. Yeah, not the real God, not Hunter Hearst Helmsley, not Triple H, not Paul Levesque. The, the other one. You know, the thoughts and prayers guy. But anyways! Ugh! It's a weird start to a video. I would have certainly going to be a weird, weird night, actually. Weird, weird weekend. WrestleMania! A show so big, no stadium's gonna hold it. <laughs> to the Performance Center we go! But two nights! No Hall of Fame, no NXT show. Mania's been pre-taped. The hell's going on here? Roman Reigns bagging off a main event type match because he's got immunodeficiencies. Ah, oh, my lord. The hits just keep on coming. But at a time that we probably need some type of distraction, some type of diversion, just something in general, here comes WWE to at least provide us something. I just look at this card, and there are so many things that either A, don't appeal to me, or B, I look at him and I say, man, this would work a whole lot better. A whole lot better. If there was actually an audience, like there were fans, noise, those types of things. You know, this thing is going to be recorded at different locations. And Rob Gronkowski is the host. And man... You talk about this company had some grandiose plans, just like a lot of people did in their lives. They're just regular plans in their lives. It all got upended due to this crap. Uh, here we are. But we're going to have it. We're going to have WrestleMania. And I'm sorry. This is, this is going to feel like the Benoit show. And all I mean by that is it's going to be one of those ones that we know all deep down inside it happened, but we do our best to ever... <laughs> to, to never, ever remember that it ever actually did happen. We try to almost wipe it out of the memory banks. Because you just think about WrestleMania. What the heck is WrestleMania like if there are no fans? And, you know, people like me over the years have been making fun of the match mark and move mark fans for their bingo hall wrestling. Well, hell, at least bingo halls and bars get a few people to show up, hammered or not, they're there. You're not even going to get that here. It's like empty arena for two nights. Ugh. Like part of the feeling of WrestleMania is the environment. It's the ambiance. It's the crowd. It's the spectacle. It's the theater. You're not going to have any of that in the Performance Center. You're just not. And unfortunately, this always feels like it's an excuse. It worked out for him in a way that they're going to sit there and use this as an excuse to justify having a two-night WrestleMania every year from now on, which realistically is probably what needed to happen any damn ways. Because some shows are getting way, 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 way too long. I don't know if I needed two nights of this, because if I look at this card, like I look at half of these matches, and I'm like, I totally and completely could do without them. Like, this is just a clear-cut example of trying to get guys on a damn card for the sake of the hell of all of it. And while I understand trying to get people out there, like, you know, Mania's already such a dud now anyways. People might still enjoy it, especially the match and move marks that aren't caring about the other things that make wrestling what wrestling is. Um, some people will just be thankful that they get any type of... <laughs> entertainment product out there that's not a rerun or not some type of Tiger King documentary on Netflix or something, and she's, you know what, I'm going to be too a little bit. It'd be nice to be able to sit down, have a little bit of a sense of normalcy, as not normal, as abnormal as it's going to be, seeing what WrestleMania is going to be this year. But like I said, half of this, you got all these damn title matches, you got some gimmick matches, you got all this other stuff, it just feels like it's overkill. 
16 matches, I think it's going to be. Could be even more, who knows. You could have given me one eight eight match show, three, three and a half hours, and that'd have been good. Just like the way WrestleMania used to be, you know? Just like the way it used to be. Um, like so many of these things. Like I look at Edge versus Randy Orton. And this is a feud, a story that should interest me a hell of a lot. This has got years of history. You've got some fortunate for business. Like you throw God in there as a guest referee, and you say, well, what storyline business does that make? Breakfast club business is always sensible. Doesn't need a reason. He just can show up. It would have been magnificent. But this match has a chance to probably be really, really good, especially with it being a last man standing match. And again, it's just going to be weird. We should call this weird mania. Is this going to be unique? Will we ever have another mania like this ever again? I certainly, for the sake of everybody involved, hope we do not. I hope we don't. Like at this point in time, you look at some of the other matches, like John Cena versus The Fiend. Like in front of 70,000 plus people at a Raymond James Stadium, this match probably really worked. would have worked. You could have made a huge presentation out of The Fiend's entrance. You could have done something with Cena too if you so desired or not. And The Fiend could have gotten his big moment, his big... Um, revenge victory, and again, nothing. You had The Undertaker and AJ Styles in a Boneyard match? Like, you know, seriously, realistically. And I know this is ironic, coming from the guy right now, ironically enough, that's wearing a Thank You Taker shirt from a couple years ago, but it's Thank You Taker, Goodbye Taker, F You Taker, Go Home! The promo he cut on Raw! Sure was looking an awful lot like you know the taker that I don't like. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to dignify it with a response here. That taker was stupid. <laughs> Shut up. It was dumb taker. Stupid. This boneyard match. Got AJ Styles probably three or four years past his best against Taker who's about 13 or 14 years past his best. It's a boneyard match. Because we're going to be lucky if we make it through the damn thing a lot. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. Please. Um, yeah, really can't make any other crafts about that, can I? Ah, change subject, change subject, change subject. Somehow, someway, this clown has a match on the card. I don't know how, other than he better be jobbing out to Otis. And that is, of course, <coughs> Dolph Ziggler. There. You forgot all about the attempt at the lame joke with the boneyard mask. Yeah, I just thought it right up again. How about that look like there's a five-way SmackDown Women's Championship match? Like Tamina's in it. That tells me all I need to know. But it ain't Naomi winning. I don't give a crap. Uh, Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler. This is like a clear-cut example of trying to force us to like two people. And I think a lot of people like Shayna or some. I... I who the hell knows anymore what wrestling fans like or don't like? Uh, but this right here, it's either Shayna Baszler wins and it just doesn't have the impact that it probably should, or Becky Lynch wins and the whole damn thing was stupid. Allegedly, we're going to get Braun Strowman replacing Goldberg, so you can imagine how the hell that's going to go over for the freaking Universal Championship. Oh, God. Just hurry up and get it over. And by the way, be better than Braun Strowman. That's all I'll say. Rhea Ripley's facing Charlotte Flair for the NXT title. Ugh. You always got to find a title for Charlotte to win, huh? Always got to find a way to have her win. It would be appropriate too, wouldn't it? To have her win that title. And I don't know if she's going to or not, but how appropriate would it be to have her win the title and then there's no reaction? Because there are no fans. How fitting, because so often when she does stuff, it elicits no reaction. But yet, she continues to get pounded and forced down your throats. You got freaking Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. That's the epitome of a Raw main event. And I guess it doesn't matter, because does the WrestleMania really matter? It's almost going to be like we try to forget about it very, very quickly. Um, and then even like, 
Drew McIntyre, Brock Lesnar. Like, I'd almost be surprised if Brock lost the strap at this point, maybe. Um, there's just so many things are just wrong about this. And I, I hate to be the, the harp and Harry or the negative idiot here, but like, it is really hard for me at a time where a distraction would be nice, a time where a diversion would be very welcome, where I'm going to sit down and watch both nights of WrestleMania, and I'm going to do my best to at least try to enjoy what I see. It's, all, it's going to be so hard for me to put it out of the back of my mind or even in the front of my mind that this just isn't a mania. And to make it so bad, I'm going to get two damn nights of it. Let's hope that whatever they've pre-recorded doesn't totally blow chunks. We get a couple of nights of a decent diversion and then we can move the hell right along and pretend like this mania never happened.